So there's a question that came in and they wanted to know, should they be concerned about goitrogenic foods, okay? So what is a goitrogenic food? It's a food that can cause a goiter, an enlarged thyroid. So the thyroid is right in the base of your neck, about two and a half inches wide, and it can swell up if it doesn't have iodine. So if someone consumes a food that blocks iodine, well, the thyroid then is not gonna be able to send the signal back up to the pituitary, and that is gonna cause more thyroid stimulating hormone to be produced. And that's coming down from the pituitary to the thyroid. It has two functions. One is to release more thyroid hormone, and number two, to enlarge the thyroid. So it's gonna get bigger. So what foods can potentially create these effects? Cassava, corn, cabbage, which is part of the cruciferous vegetables. That would include like kale, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, bok choy, etc. Then we have canola, soybeans, almonds, cherries, strawberries, spinach, sweet potato, and there are many more as well. Now, right off the bat, I'm gonna recommend not to consume sweet potato anyway, so you, you can rule that out, and not to do canola, because it's GMO, and not to do corn, or cassava, or soybeans, okay? And cherries are a bit too high in sugar. And out of these foods, cruciferous could potentially be a problem, but really only for those people that are sensitive to it. Also, you'd have to consume large amounts of cruciferous frequently to create a deficiency. Also realize that when you cook cruciferous vegetables, ferment it, boil it, or steam it, you reduce these chemicals that can create this effect. So for most people, they don't have to worry about it. If you're concerned, if you already have a hypothyroid problem, if you know you have an iodine deficiency and you're sensitive to these foods, then take seek help, okay? And don't consume these foods on a daily basis. Have them periodically, but not very often. Also realize that one of the best sources of iodine would be shellfish, fish, and sea kelp. Now you just wanna make sure when you take sea kelp, don't take large and large amounts. All you need to do is one or two in the morning and you're good to go. And that will give you enough iodine to protect you from any potential deficiency that any of these could create. All right, thanks for watching. Hey, if you're liking this content, please subscribe now and I will actually keep you updated on future videos.